Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. Okay, that'll work for the moment. Hey, if I could just grab everybody's attention real quick. It's kind of like a 10 minute warning. If anybody hasn't gone to the buffet yet, uh, grab food, drink, whatever, we're gonna be starting the program in about 10 minutes. So go to the buffet, enjoy yourself, come back, 10 minutes, thanks. Check, check.
That is Johnny Hendry wearing four. That's his brother Gio wearing seven. And the brothers are one and two. Heading to the finish line here. It's Johnny. Wait! Out of nowhere, a pass on the far side. And getting it done is Bryant's Aiden Hickey. Holy cow! Correction, that wasn't Bryant's Aiden Hickey. That was UMBC's Liam McGinnis. Liam McGinnis was the 12 seed heading into the weekend. I don't think I've seen anything like, I haven't seen an upset like that at this event. All right, we're going to get this party started. How, do, how does that sound to everybody? All right. Everybody feeling gritty out there? Okay, hopefully you all have your, um, your food and your drink and you're all good to go. We're going to start the, we're going to start the event. I'm Gary Stein, and uh, I do the play-by-play -play for UMBC men's basketball and men's lacrosse. I also fill in from time to time uh, women's lacrosse, women's basketball, as Steve Levy likes to tell me every once in a while, this is my fourth decade doing it. I certainly don't feel like it, but I just do want to say that it is an honor and a pleasure to have been associated with the program for all these years, and it's certainly an honor and a pleasure to be in front of you guys tonight. So thank you very much for the opportunity once again. You all know what this is about. And this is a great time of year. I know finals are coming up and all that, but you know the weather's warm, school's coming to an end. It's been a great athletic season from the fall all the way through winter and spring. And this is a great annual banquet. We'd like to start tonight by welcoming, uh, welcoming a man who guided Retriever Nation through some choppy waters early in his tenure. Uh, but now, apparently, it's all systems go. So without further ado, let's get started. UMBC's Director of Athletics, Brian Barrio.
Good evening. How are we doing tonight, Retrievers? How are we doing tonight? All right, it's a little better. Well, hey, this is, this is always one of my favorite nights of the year. Um, I, you know, we spend a lot of time thinking about and, and trying to keep fo people focused on the future. And this is kind of the one night of the year when we get to stop and reflect on the, the immediate past and, and what we've accomplished this year. Uh, so it's always a pleasure to sit here and look out. I can't really see you because of the lights, but I, I know you're there. Um, at the athletes who make this place what it is. And I'm just so proud of, of all of you, the things you do on the field, the things you do off the field, um, all the things that I hear from our fans, from our folks on campus. I'm, I just couldn't be more proud than to be the athletic director at this school. And you guys are just an unbelievable group of young men and women. So thank you. Thank you for everything you do. I know that I got up here last year and I, and I went through every sport and talked about things that happened and I am positive that I left somebody out and hurt somebody's feelings, so I'm not gonna do that again. But I do wanna point out a couple of people who are here tonight who are really special um, folks that, that support our programs um, that we don't see every day. So first, uh, Greg Simmons is here, our old friend, <laughs> Vice President of Institutional Advancement and one of our great supporters. Katie Kine, who I think all of you know, our faculty athletics rep. And Maria Franco from ABM, our corporate sponsor tonight. And I also want to thank Gary Stein, the, the voice of the retrievers, who, who is a tough act to follow and certainly a professional speaker in a way that I'm not. So thank you, Gary. <laughs> you know, one thing that always comes up as we prepare for, for Gritties is the no matter when you have this ceremony, it's sort of unfair to some athletes. Because if you do it in the fall, you know, the fall season hasn't completed. If you do it in the spring, the spring athletes are still competing. And uh, this year is maybe the best example I've ever seen of this. So I want to point out uh, a few things that are going on that happened too late for inclusion in the gritties officially, but that are really special and gritty worthy things. So first, uh, where are our baseball guys? All right. If you're, if you're not aware, um, baseball has been steadily building for the last few years, and they are rolling. They went up to Maine this weekend, took two out of three from the league leaders, and are planning on um, doing more of that in the championship? Yes? Okay. So, hey, I want to recognize these guys because they have worked really hard, and they're having an awesome year, and we're really proud of them. So, baseball. And how about our softball friends? Where are our softball friends? Right here. Okay. Softball, it's pro you're probably getting bored of all the, the praise and everything, so I'll give you a little more. Uh, softball, once again, has dominated America East and won the regular season championship. And this year, we'll be hosting the softball championships this week, beginning Wednesday, right here at our diamond. So please come out and support these young ladies who are in progress with a dynasty. Thank you. Thank you very much. And then finally, where are our track and field friends? In the back, all right. Track and field, just this weekend, again, too late to be included in gritties, but we had four individual gold medalists this weekend. I wanna point them out. Let's see, where's Caitlin Bob? Caitlin Bob anywhere? All right. Joseph Papa, another gold medalist. Where's Michael Arnold? All right. Hey, just because it happened at the end of the school year and right before the gritties, we wanted to make sure we recognize you. And I, I do realize I'm leaving one out. Um, we want to recognize you. Great job this weekend. We're very proud of what you all did. So thank you. And now we've kind of got a video daily double here, if I'm not mistaken. We got the video? So here's the fourth individual performance that we saw this weekend. Where's, where's Mr. McGinnis? Say hello to Liam McGinnis. Now hold that thought for one second and we're gonna roll a video here. I think. That is Johnny Hendry wearing four. That's his brother Gio wearing seven. And the brothers are one and two. Heading to the finish line here. It's Johnny, wait! 
out of nowhere. A pass on the far side, and getting it done is Bryant's Aiden Hickey. Holy cow. Correction, that wasn't Bryant's Aiden Hickey. That was UMBC's Liam McGinnis. Liam McGinnis was the 12 seed heading into the weekend. I don't think I've seen anything like, I haven't seen an upset like that at this event in a long time. Liam McGinnis, the 12 seed on the performance list at the beginning of the weekend, just came from behind in the last turn at the back straightaway and took the, and took the 800 championship. And again, you know, embarrassment on my part for calling out the wrong name of the finish there, but I was just so shocked to see just a body coming out of nowhere to take that race. That was it a, came out that of nowhere, Liam McGinnis, thank you. <laughs> definitely, definitely always good to start the event off with some goosebumps. I got goosebumps. Thank you and, and all the other awesome spring athletes who had a great weekend and uh, good luck in the rest of your seasons. And we're looking forward to the rest of tonight. So welcome to the 2023 Gritties. Hey, how about one more hand for Liam McGinnis? I mean, that's just unbelievable. All right, a few reminders here for our awards presentation. I know you guys are going to forget this as soon as I say it, but I got to do it anyway. If you present or receive an award tonight, please come up to the stage to my left, exit on the opposite side to my right, have your individual or group photo taken with your presenter or coach by the UMBC backdrop. Now the UMBC backdrop is in a different place. It's up where, I can't even see who's raising his hand back there, but it's by the person raising his hand by the balloons. So again, it'll be like a route. You take all the way around the rack and you end up there and that's where you'll take your pictures. For our fall, winter and spring sport awards, I'm gonna ask that all of the coaches for that season, please gather stage left so you're ready to go once the sport that precedes you has completed their presentation. And for our student athlete gritties presenters, you should come to the stage as a twosome or a threesome so we can continue the lively pace of play. And just remember, we're streaming on America East uh, digital network tonight, so let's have a great time. But before we get into our presentations, let's take a look at all of our nominees for best picture, Best actress at, what, no, wait a minute, that's not the, I, hold on a second here. I got, I lost my, oh, here it is, sorry, wrong show. Let's take a look at the nominees, that part I got right, for our three major awards. The Matt Skalski Scholar Athlete Award, the Retrievers of the Year, and the Dr. Charles Brown Athletes of the Year. Our nominees for the Matt Skalski Scholar Athlete Award are, on the ladies' side, from soccer, Alyssa Clearfield. From lacrosse, Megan Halsick. Representing volleyball, Asia Miller. And from track and field, Petronilla Onyabadi. For the men, from lacrosse, Brett Belsha. From track and field, Jaden Burke. From basketball, Matteo Piccarelli. And representing swimming and diving, Nicholas Weigelt. Tough call, stay tuned. We'll get to those a little bit later on. In Our the show. nominees for Retriever. Oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> okay, still, tough call. We'll get to those a little bit later in the show. At this time, I would like to call up Associate Athletics Director for Academics, Adriana Mason, who will honor, who will honor UMBC's newest members of the National College Athlete Honor Society, Chi Alpha Sigma, with the presentation of certificates. She will be joined by her staff, Academic Advisors Daniel Bowen, Brooke Carey, and Megan Usher, who will honor our 47 new entrants. To earn entrance, a student athlete must have achieved junior academic standing by the fifth semester of enrollment, have a minimum cumulative GPA of 3.40, and have lettered in his or her sport during the academic year nominated. 
We have a very long list, 47, which is great news, but the, please hold your applause until we conclude and will not have photos taken after this presentation. Also, because of the long list of people, student athletes, what I, what, I, what, what I think we should do is probably line up in front of the stage as opposed to on the stage. I don't think on the stage can hold it. So as your name is called up, come on up and all the way to the right, and we'll just honor you in front of the stage. Okay, we ready to roll? We'll get ready. Gotcha. Uh, eight, you, mean, you mean Adriana? Okay, so Adriana is stuck in traffic, but we do have everybody else involved. Okay, here we go. Little curveball there. Listen up for your team and come on down when you are called. Women's lacrosse, represented by Alexis Aby, Lauren Conduit, Kennedy Evans, Isabella, Isabella Fontana, and Kendall Hendricks. Please come on up. <laughs> Men's lacrosse is represented by Michael Doty, Dane Hall, Kyle Hoff, Brendan Kennedy, and Brian Traganing. Come on up from men's lacrosse. <laughs> Representing women's cross country is Liz Willman and Brooke Wright. From women's track and field, it's Melissa Kamika and Samantha Kamika. Men's cross country, Mark McKeever, Will Sakowitz, Darren Taylor, and Zachary Taylor. Men's track and field, Jiga Adigboyo and Jaden Burke. From softball, Jaden McKeon, Madison Oberg, and Chanel Stott. From the baseball team, Tony Krieger. From the men's basketball team, Matteo Piccarelli. From women's swimming and diving, we have Shea Bursky, Roa Farag, Rola Hussein, Celeste Kerwitz, and Naya Stahl. Men's swimming and diving, Max Casey Bolanos, Michael Dressler, Ryan Murray, Daniel Nikoshan, Nicholas Poulos, and Dom Tobin. From volleyball, Michaela DeMarzi and Asia Miller. Women's soccer, Allie Clearfield, and Megan Mackay. Men's soccer, Taylor Kalhara, William Forby, Spencer Hanks, Tyler Harry, Brendan Lamaster, Hans Nessheim, and Dylan Nesteruk. And there are the newest members of Chi Alpha Sigma, all 47 of you, congratulations. And while we have a moment, while our men's and women's soccer honorees are still up front, the academic staff has a special presentation for their programs. We will be presenting representatives of Retrievers Women's and Men's Soccer a certificate signifying that they earned the highest cumulative GPA for the 2022-23 academic year. Congratulations to Retrievers men's and women's soccer. And there's more. Adriana and her staff are pleased to announce that Retriever Athletics this year has 13 Arthur Ashe Jr. Sports Scholars for the 22-23 academic season and athletic season. These awards, which were inspired by tennis legend Arthur Ashe Jr.'s commitment to education, honor students of color who have excelled in the classroom as well as on the athletic field. When your name is called, please come forward to accept your certificate. 
From men swimming and diving, it's Max Casey Bolanos and Gabe Laraquente. From softball, it's Julia Colton. From women's cross country and track and field, Emmy Beyer. From women's lacrosse, Katana Nelson. From women's soccer, Kimberly Herrett, Abby Joseph, and Lauren Reed. From women's track and field, Petronilla Oyanbadi and Zakeza Parsons. And from volleyball, Michaela DeMarzi, Asia Miller, and Kayla Tomas. Congratulations to Retrievers Nation 2022-2023 Arthur Ashe Jr. Sports Scholars. Quite an honor. Okay, so congratulations to everybody. You can make your way down. Okay, so we're going to cue the video, and we'll take a look at our nominees now for the Retrievers of the Year and the Dr. Charles Brown Athlete of the Year. Our nominees for Retriever of the Year are, starting with the ladies, from cross country and track and field, Emmy Byer, representing lacrosse. Claire Boxty. From track and field, Jasmine Holland. And from swimming and diving, Caroline Sargent. On the men's side, from track and field, Michael Arnold. From lacrosse, Taylor Bohannon. Representing baseball, Ian Diaz. From men's soccer, Quantrell Jones. And from men's swimming and diving, Nicholas Weigelt. And our nominees for the Dr. Charles R. Brown Outstanding Athlete of the Year Award. On the women's side, from basketball, Kiara Bell. From lacrosse, Claire Boxty. From softball, Courtney Coppersmith. From volleyball, Asia Miller. And representing track and field, Ava Roberts. And our nominees for the Dr. Charles R. Brown Outstanding Athlete of the Year Award. For the gentlemen, from soccer, Taylor Calhera. Representing baseball, Luke Johnson. From track and field, Gabriel Coletzi. And from swimming and diving, Danny Nikushin. All right, we'll get to those a little bit later on as well. Stay tuned. At this time, I would like to introduce Dr. Katherine Kine, UMBC's faculty athletics representative, who will present the 2022-2023 Matt Skalski Outstanding Scholar Athlete Awards.
Hi, everybody. It's really great to be here with all of you. Um, I've been your FAR for a couple years now, and I continue to be delighted as a former athlete to get to leave the academic buildings every once in a while and come hang out in the athletic buildings and on the athletic fields instead. Um, as faculty athletic rep, I'm mostly only visibly involved when there's a problem, which means with this group, I don't have to be involved very much, which is great. <laughs> um, so for the most part, I just enjoy seeing everything that you all do. And everybody in this room, especially the women in this room, I'm always so proud to bring my daughters to your games. If whoever's the mascot at the women's basketball games is here, I should apologize for them. Um, <laughs> We'll try to tone it down. Um, but I'm going to present the Matt Skalski uh, Outstanding Scholar Athlete Award. At his tragically untimely passing after just three semesters at UMBC in January of 1995, basketball and baseball standout Matt Skalski had a 4.0 grade point average. From that point forward, UMBC's top academic award has been named in his memory. The award is annually presented to the retriever female and male student athlete that's been nominated for America East All Academic Team Honors and is a significant contributor to his or her team. Uh, we heard them a moment ago, but I will read again our nominees. First for the women, from soccer, Alyssa Clearfield. From lacrosse, Megan Halzik. From volleyball, Asia Miller. And from track and field, Petronilla Anyabodi. And the winner is Asia Miller. And now for the men's award. From lacrosse, Brett Bosha. From track and field, Jaden Burke. From basketball, Matteo Piccarelli. And from swimming and diving, Nicholas Weigelt. And the winner is Nicholas Weigelt. Congratulations to Asia Miller and Nicholas Weigel, well earned. Now time for our fall sports awards. I'm gonna call up some coaches here to gather to my left. If coaches Karinji slash Adams, Stanton, Kreider, and DuPaul could come forward at this time, please. <laughs> Student athletes, during our team awards, when your name is called, please come up to the stage again to my left to receive your award, wait up here until all three recipients from your team have been announced, and then exit stage right for the photograph. To our audience, again, hold applause until all three recipients have been introduced. Our order will be men's soccer, women's soccer, volleyball, and women's and men's cross country. Our first presentation for men's soccer will be made by the legend himself, Pete Karinji Jr. Where is that man? Where am I going? There you are. Okay. Hold up. Oh, Mr. Adams. Are you oh, gonna you're going to present. Oh, oh, hold on. Oh, I got I to gotta talk to this guy. Okay. We're all good here. For the second consecutive year, the team's unsung hero is Tyler Harry. 
The most improved athlete is Carl Quist Thurston. And the most valuable athlete from men's soccer is Ryan Betcher, who graduated in December. Congratulations to all, and there are your team award winners for men's soccer. Thank you. Next presenting for women's soccer, head coach Rick Stanton. The team's most improved athlete is Natasha Monroe. The unsung hero is Alyssa Clearfield. And the most valuable athlete for women's soccer is Megan Mackay. And they are your team award winners for women's soccer. Now presenting for volleyball, our new head coach, Casey Kreider. The most improved athlete for volleyball is Miwa Ilieva. And we have co-most valuable athletes, and they are Asia Miller and Mia Belusic. There are your team award winners for volleyball. To present for both men's and women's cross country is first year head coach Mike DePaul. We'll go ladies first here. The most improved athlete is Lena Barach. The unsung hero is Lily Strelecki. And the team's most outstanding athlete is Emmy Beyer. And there are your team award winners for women's cross country. And we also want to recognize Emmy as an America East all-conference performer in the fall. Congratulations. Now on the men's side, the most improved athlete is Jafar Hassan. The unsung hero is Baraka Sila. And the most valuable athlete is Cameron Hindnell. And we also want to recognize Cameron as an All-America East performer in the fall as well. Congratulations. And these are your team award winners for men's cross country. At this time, I would like to introduce Associate Athletic Director for Sports Medicine and Performance, Stacy Carone, who will present the 2022-23 Leon Upshur Memorial Award. Good evening, Retrievers. I have the joy of presenting a very lengthy award, so bear with me as I read um, a very important paragraph tonight and give out a very, very important award. 
Leon Upshur was UMBC's equipment room supervisor for 22 years. He was a man who asked for and received little fanfare. He simply got his job qu done quietly and efficiently. This award, in his memory, honors an individual that contributes to the mission of the athletic department and the capabilities other than precipitation? participation. Over the years, student athletic trainers, statisticians, spirit squad members, tutors, mascots, and other outstanding student workers have been most associated with receiving this award, which the Upshur family is proud to be associated with. Since 2021, Eugene Chung has been a shining star in the sports medicine department. <laughs> Wait, not, not yet, not yet, not yet. He is extremely dependable and well-liked with all of the student athletes, as you just heard. He embraces the core values of our sports medicine department, building trusting professional relationships with our entire staff and student athletes across all sports. Eugene is also an EMT, so having him on our sideline meant that if the worst case scenario were to occur, we had another set of very capable hands right next to us. Over the past two years, Eugene has put in countless hours, including weekends, interning with us and always did it with a smile. This year's recipient of the Leon Upshar Award is Eugene Chung. Well, Mr. Chung, you're obviously <laughs> extremely well-liked. That is great. Now it's time for our first three gritty presentations of the evening. Many of our presenters earned 2022 gritties in the same category. So to lead it off, presenting the gritty for the Female Rookie of the Year is the 2022 winner, Track and Field's Caitlin Bob. So I'm Kay, so I'm a sophomore of the women's track and field team, and last year, as they said, I was the nominee, well, the recipient of the award, and so this year is my pleasure to notice and say this year's recipient, and the winner, if I can open the envelope, is Saren Maiden. Now it's time for the male rookie of the year. Last year's winner is here to present the award this year. This is from Swimming's Oliver Gassman.
Hey guys, I'm Oliver. I was honored to win this award last year, so now I'm honored to present it this year. And the winner is... Joseph Papa. Now to present the Newcomer of the Year from Women's Basketball, please welcome Keela Dixon. Good evening, everyone. My name is Keila Dixon. I played for the women's basketball team here at UMBC. Um, I'm excited to present this award. I was nominated for this award last year, so I know how important it is to come to a new school and really excel. Uh, so without further ado, the winner of this award is Kiara Bell. Congratulations to all our award winners. Well, well earned. Now time for our Winter Sports Awards. The order for the Winter Sports Awards will be men's basketball, women's basketball, swimming and diving, and indoor track and field. So if those coaches could please come up to the stage area. Presenting for men's basketball will be head coach Jim Ferry. Women's basketball will be Janetta Hayes. And men's, women's and uh, swimming and diving, head coach Matt Donovan. All right, here we go. Men's basketball. The team's most improved athlete is Matteo Piccarelli. The unsung hero is Anyang Garang. And the most valuable athlete is Trayvon Fagan. There are your team award winners for men's basketball. Now to present for women's basketball, head coach Janetta Hayes. You too. The unsung hero for women's basketball is Keela Dixon. The most improved athlete is Paloma Iradir. And the most valuable athlete for women's basketball is Lacey Drake. 
And there are your team award winners for women's basketball. Now to present for men's and women's swimming and diving, we have head coach Matt Donovan. We'll go with the men first here. The team's unsung hero is Chris Welsh. The most improved athlete is diver Christian Coleman. And the most valuable athlete is Daniel Nikishan. And there are your team award winners for men swimming and diving. Now for the women's side. Their unsung hero is Kala Durr. The team's most improved athlete is diver Isabella Evers. And the most valuable athlete is Susie Cadigan. And there are your team award winners for women swimming and diving. Okay, our final presenter for winter sports is head track and field coach David Bob, of course, who will present for men's and women's indoor track and field. We'll go ladies first here, where there are two most valuable athletes and one unsung hero. The unsung hero is Ava Roberts. And the co-most valuable athletes are Leanne McDonald and Jasmine Holland. And they are your team award winners for women's indoor track and field. Now to the men's side, the most improved athlete is Nicholas Alphonse. The team's unsung hero is Zachary Taylor. And the most valuable athlete on the men's side is Ibra Karat. And they are your team award winners for men's indoor track and field. Okay, now for our next two Gritty Awards, presenting for Breakthrough Athlete of the Year, last year's winner, Carly Keating from Softball.
Arlie Keating, and I'm a grad student on softball. I was honored to win this award last year, and I'm honored to present it today. And the winner is Megan Mackay from Women's Softball. Now it's time for the Women's Performance of the Year. Our presenter will be Colin Mood from Men's Swimming and Diving. Here are the nominees for Women's Performance of the Year. On their senior day, the women's basketball team knocked down a school record 15 trays in a route of New Hampshire. In back-to-back -back home wins over Delaware and national power James Madison, Kamini Conte recorded 27 and 32 kills respectively and hit over 30% from the floor. Courtney Coppersmith fanned 11 Bulldogs and threw a six-inning perfect game at Bryant. In the season opener, Megan Halzik recorded a school record 13 draw controls and a win over GW. Ava Roberts earned gold in the discus and silver in the shot put in the outdoor season opener at the University of South Carolina. Caroline Sargent won the final event of her career, earning gold in the 200 backstroke at the America East Championships. After qualifying in fourth place, the women's 4x100 relay team strikes gold in the finals at the Penn Relays. Good evening, everyone. My name is Colin Mood. I am a fifth year on the men's swimming and diving team as well as one of the American East SAC reps for UMBC. It is an honor and privilege to present the Women's Performance of the Year tonight. So without further ado, get this open. Uh, the winner is Kamani Conte of Volleyball. Now batting third in this order, to present for men's performance of the year, our presenter will be Courtney Coppersmith from softball. Here are the nominees for men's performance of the year. After missing a year due to injury, Spencer Hanks debuts with a three goal, one assist effort in a route of Fairfield. Speaking of debuts, freshman Gabriel Coletzi takes gold in his first UMBC meet, winning the javelin at the University of South Carolina. Freshman Leewood Molessa knocks three out of the park in a 14-7 win in conference play at UAlbany. The men's swimming and diving team's 200 freestyle relay gets a critical victory edging Binghamton by 0.6 seconds at the America East Championships. As Gary mentioned, uh, my name is Courtney Coppersmith. I'm a grad student on the softball team. Um, I won Performance of the Year last year, and I'm honored to present the performance, the male Performance of the Year this year to Lee Wood Melissa yeah. from baseball.
Spring sports are now up on the docket, and here's the lineup. Men's lacrosse, women's lacrosse, track and field, softball, and baseball. Please come to stage left, coaches Moran, Slade, Bob, and Kuhlmeyer, please. Now, because Retriever Baseball still has eight regular season and a lengthy postseason ahead of them, Coach Bowen will announce his team's awards at a later date. So keep up the good work, guys. To present for men's lacrosse, please let's welcome head coach Ryan Moran. The team has two unsung heroes, and they are graduate students Brett Bausha and Andrew Taylor. And the most valuable athlete from men's lacrosse is Mateo Brown. To make the presentation for women's lacrosse, here's head coach Amy Slade. The team's unsung hero is Jenna McDermott. Your most improved athlete is Ellie Lawton. And the most valuable athlete for women's lacrosse, Megan Halzik. And there are your team award winners for women's lacrosse. David Bob, please present for outdoor track and field. Ladies first here for outdoor track and field. The team's most improved athlete is Zakeza Parsons. And we have co-most valuable athletes, Caitlin Bob, Jasmine Holland. And these are your team award winners for women's outdoor track and field. All right, here we go now to the men. The squad's most improved athlete, Nicholas Alphonse. The unsung hero is Liam McGinnis. And the most valuable athlete is Michael Arnold. And there are your team award winners for men's outdoor track and field. Now to present for softball, head coach Chris Kuhlmeyer. The team's most improved athlete is Ashley De La Guardia. The unsung hero is Madison Wilson. And the most valuable athlete is Kaya Motter. And there are your team award winners for softball. Congratulations. 
And now for our final set of gritties. To introduce for the game slash event of the year is Kamini Conte from volleyball, a member of the team that won it a year ago by virtue of their come from behind memorable victory in the America East Championship game over UAlbany. Here are our nominees for game and event of the year. The UMBC baseball team played Navy at Oriole Park at Camden Yards in front of a large crowd and came away victorious. In their first ever America East quarterfinal home game, the women's basketball team defeats NJIT 82-71. to The men's soccer team scores twice in the final 7 minutes 30 seconds of the game to rally past 10th ranked Vermont 2-1 at Retriever Soccer Park. On back-to-back -back home conference weekends, the softball team hits walk-off homers to defeat Bryant and Binghamton. With a strong challenge from Binghamton, the men's swimming and diving squads hold them off to capture their second straight America East title. The volleyball team knocks off 21st ranked James Madison in five sets to post the program's first win over a top 25 team. My name is Kamini Conte and I am a senior on the volleyball team and I am very honored to announce this award. And the winner is Men Swimming and Diving. And will the captain, oh, yeah. Uh, will the captains come forward to accept the award, please? Our final gritty of the night is for the play of the year, and it will be presented by men's soccer Quantrell Jones, who earned the honor in 2022. Here are our nominees for play of the year. Craig Boatwan converts a driving layup with 1.8 seconds remaining to give men's basketball a 78-76 victory over Central Connecticut. Golazo! Ryan Betcher nets an incredible goal to secure a 4-1 win over NJIT. Lacey Drake's tray off of one foot with 0.2 seconds remaining gives UMBC a 61-60 victory over NJIT. Alan Hockenberry wheels and whips a backhander past the Drexel goal just before the horn in a 12-8 opening game victory for men's lacrosse. Justin Taylor makes a diving grab in the alley and the Retrievers win over Navy at Camden Yard. How are you doing? Uh, my name is Quantrell Jones, recent graduate of the men's soccer program. Um, but yeah, play the, the mega play, it's really difficult. You don't know what's going to be the play until after the fact, the game's over. And I'm honored to win that award, and I'm also honored to present this award. So without further ado, the winner is Lacey Drake. <laughs>
Okay, now it's time for our premier awards. It's the Retrievers of the Year and the Dr. Charles Brown Outstanding Athlete Award. To present the Retrievers of the Year, please welcome UMBC's Vice President for Institutional Advancement, Greg Simmons. Greg will explain the award and opens on the, okay. How's everybody doing tonight? Congratulations, you all look terrific. It's nice to see somebody else in a tie once in a while, so you all look really very good. Before I start, you know, you can't have an Athletes of the Year without the coaches and the staff who make everything run, right? So do me a favor and just give a round of applause to the coaches and the staff, everybody who does everything to put you in a position to be successful, right? It's a great, great group. So uh, congratulations to everybody tonight who's been nominated and who's won an award. It's my honor to present the 2022-2023 Retrievers of the Year. For some of you old timers, this used to be the Outstanding Senior Athletes Award, but we've realigned it to model the National Senior Class Awards, okay? So these awards, you saw the names before, they go to seniors who have competed for at least three years um, and have notable achievements in the four areas of excellence, community, classroom, character, and competition. Here are our female nominees from cross country track and field, Emmy Beyer. From lacrosse, Claire Boxty. From track and field, Jasmine Holland. And from swimming and diving, Caroline Sargent. And the winner is Claire Boxty. Okay, and now for our men's nominees. From track and field, Michael Arnold. From lacrosse, Taylor Bohannon. From baseball, Ian Diaz. From soccer, Quantrell Jones. And from swimming and diving, Nicholas Weigelt. And the winner is Quantrell Jones. Our closing award for the night is the Dr. Charles R. Brown Outstanding Athlete Award. This award is presented by our friends at ABM. At this time, I would like to welcome to the stage Maria Franco, the Director of Operations for ABM, who will make the presentation tonight. Hi, good evening everybody. Thanks for being here and thanks for having me and inviting ABM. Um, well, this evening has been um, a pleasure of mine to see um, the energy in the room. And you're probably wondering what ABM is and who is Maria Franco. You've heard from your friends, from your staff members and from your coaches. So ABM is your, it's our partner company with UMBC. We partner to do the cleaning in your campus. So we are in charge of that part aspect of the campus. So we have a team of about the size of this that goes around campus every night and takes care of your facilities to provide you um, hopefully the cleanest environment that we can. Um, so I just want to mention 
um, that I am here to represent a team of about 100 people that are here nightly and daily for you guys and for UMBC, and also to appreciate not only the athletes, but um, the general partnership that we've had for such a long period of time. So thank you for that. And now I know you guys are anxious to hear your winner, so we'll move on to that part. Um, I am here to present, as he said, the Dr. Charles Brown Award that is presented to the UMBC Most Outstanding Athlete each academic year. Dr. Brown served as the UMBC Athletics Director from 1989 to 2013, um, making it the longest tenure director um, of and athletics at the NAC, NCAA Division I level in the state of Maryland. In his final 12 years in the helm, Retrievers won 52 league titles and made 31 appearances in the NCAA championship competition. So here are the female nominees, which you saw earlier on the screen, for um, basketball, Kiara Bell, from lacrosse, Claire Boxty from softball, Courtney Coppersmith from volleyball, Asia, Asia Miller and from track and field, Ava Roberts. And your winner is Courtney Coppersmith. Okay, and now for our men's nominees from soccer, Taylor Kalhara. From basketball, Luke Johnson. From swimming and diving, Danny Nicoshan. And from track and field, Gabriel Coletzi. And your winner is Luke Johnson. Okay, so before we close it out, another great event, uh, another great presentation tonight. I'd like to call up Director of Athletics Brian Barrio for some final words and also a special tribute. Brian? First of all, uh, let's, get, let's have one more round of applause for all of you. That was incredible. Just watching all those memories again. Thank you. The, the two best things tonight for me were watching and being reminded of those great moments that we had um, during the year and listening and hearing you support your teammates and your colleagues on other teams. And that, that was one of the most special things this year for me to see is just that culture in our department uh, where I see you out at, everybody's, at everybody else's games. Where are the cross country guys? I see them at everybody's games. Um, but no, that's, that's a sign of a really healthy department and a great group of people. And I could hear it tonight uh, with you cheering behind me. So thank you to all of you. I'm really proud to be a part of what you're doing. Um, and I want to close tonight. This, this night's about you. It's about the student athletes. But there's one person here tonight that I want to call up, is, if he's out there, Pete Karinji. Pete, you still here? You, you all probably know this by now, but uh, Mr. Karinji just wrapped up an unprecedented, incredibly historic career with us at UMBC. 32 years 
32 years as the men's soccer coach here. And I'll tell you, that's, as, that was always uncommon to have a successful 32-year career as a head coach. It's even more uncommon today. Um, and I, before, while we're together one last time this year, I wanted all of you to get a chance um, to really express your gratitude and our gratitude um, for probably the greatest coach we've ever had at this institution and somebody that we're very proud of. Uh, so without any further ado, Pete Karinji. Thank you, thank you. I was not prepared for a speech. Um, I thought I'd come in and just be with my team. And uh, one, I'd like to congratulate all the award winners. Um, and obviously, this past season was a tremendous season overall for every team. And wish good luck to the teams that are coming up. Uh, baseball still has a championship to win. Women's softball has a, a championship to win. Um, and we wish you good luck. I think one of the unique things about that I liked it, about this year with the teams in general, we have a big game. I went to coaches, asked guys and the girls, the coaches, to have their teams come and support us. And clearly you came out on that one game we had, probably a record crowd, but to have everyone there and know that you're supporting us and cheering and hollering meant a lot. And in turn, I think we all should be doing that for one another. And clearly now that I have some free time, hopefully, um, I'll be coming out and watching more games. But as I said, I wasn't prepared for the speech, but clearly UMBC meant a lot to me. Um, it was fun to just be around and watch a lot of teams grow and coaches grow. Um, and I'll miss it, but I'll still be around and bugging everyone from Brian to the coaches and be in their offices. But I'd like to thank certain coaches like Coach Bob, uh, who I had my weekly conferences with and just talked about things in general, the women's lacrosse coaches, um, we go in there and have conversations. They were here the longest, along with Coach Bob and myself. Um, but thank you, everyone. Good luck. That's my speech for today. One more time for Pete Karinji. All right, that's all we got. Go dogs and good night. Thank you. Hey guys, just one more quick thing. Be before you go, just look at the middle of your table. You've got that little... Um, uh, 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 frame that picture frame in there. Please don't take the frame. You can you can take the picture. Don't take the frame, please. Good good night, everybody. Have a great finals and a great rest.